Hello, today we're going to make rhubarb wine. The fruit is widely available and does make a very fine wine, but it does have problems. Firstly, rhubarb contains a poisonous acid called oxalic acid. Secondly, this sometimes causes destruction of the yeast in the wine. This can cause beginners to view winemaking as an advanced science, whereas it is really comparatively easy. The two problems are resolved by first treating the rhubarb in a different fashion from that advocated in old country winemaking books, and secondly by ensuring that the conditions are ideal for the yeast. The main acid in rhubarb is malic acid, which is a good fermenting acid and invaluable in maturing. To stop the oxalic acid being dissolved into the liquor, we're going to use a cold water extraction. Prior to starting, let's see what equipment we will need. For the initial fermentation, we're going to use a two-gallon bin with a sealable lid, a set of scales, some measuring spoons, and a two-pint measuring jug. All equipment needs to be sterilised, and for this, we've used a Camden tablet solution. To make a gallon of wine, which is equivalent to six bottles, the ingredients you'll need are four pounds of rhubarb, two pounds of sugar, and a champagne wine yeast. The additives are half a teaspoon of grape tannin, two three milligram vitamin B1 tablets, making a total of six milligrams, one teaspoon of yeast nutrient, and one teaspoon of pectinase. We will show all these ingredients and additives at the end of this video, so don't worry about having to note everything down at this point. For all our recipes, we like to use a yeast starter and ours was started 24 hours ago, made with orange juice as per our video on our YouTube channel. We now start to prepare the fruit by washing and cutting into two inch chunks, slicing each chunk into three. Now place this fruit into the bin and that that we'd already cut and sliced. Add the two pounds of sugar. And the additives. Firstly, two vitamin B1 tablets crushed between two spoons Half a teaspoon of grape tannin, and a teaspoon of each
of the yeast nutrient. And a teaspoon of the pectinase. Right, now we add the yeast starter. And five pints of cold water. That's two. That's four. That's five. All of which can be stirred to dissolve the sugar. We will now leave this to ferment for seven days. Hello, here we are seven days later and the liquid in the bin should now be removed from the pulp and the fermentation process continued. For this we need a sterilised gallon jar, a funnel, a fine mesh straining bag and an airlock with a rubber bung. We pour the contents of the fermenting bin slowly through the straining bag and the funnel into the gallon jar. If your rhubarb has become very soft, do not be tempted to over squeeze the straining bag at this stage as we want to reduce the amount of fine pulp being transferred to the jar.
Once all of the liquid has been transferred to the jar, as you can see, we need to top up with cold water to the neck and fit an airlock. The gallon jar is now left to ferment to dryness or a specific gravity of a thousand or less. Here we are seven days later and there is no gas being produced. The wine seems to have finished fermenting but we should check before the next step. To check the wine we will need a hydrometer and a clear trial jar. Siphon some of the wine from the gallon jar into the trial jar and take a reading using the hydrometer. To take a reading, lower the hydrometer into the liquid and spin it gently. If the reading shows a specific gravity of a thousand or less, then the fermentation is probably complete. Our fermentation shows a reading of 994, which suggests, maybe even more than suggests, that it has finished. The main contributory factor to the short fermentation period is the fact that only two pounds of sugar were used in this recipe to achieve a dry wine. We now add one crushed Camden tablet to kill off the yeast and leave the wine for 24 hours. One level, quarter of a teaspoon of Camden powder is the equivalent of one tablet. We now leave the wine to stabilise for 24 hours. Hello, here we are 24 hours later. We can now rack the wine into another clean jar using a siphon tube. Siphon the wine into the new jar, taking care not to transfer 
any of the sediment from the bottom of this jar. Now we've got to top up the jar with cold water if necessary and this time it is necessary. We then fit a board cork plugged with cotton wool. The wine will now start to settle and clear when placed into a cooler environment. This wine will normally clear by itself and will not need anything added. We then leave the wine to mature for at least six months. When the wine is clear it can be transferred to clean bottles and left to stand upright. This wine can frequently undergo what is called a malolactic fermentation which results in gas being generated in the bottle so that a sparkling wine results. We wish you all the best with your wine making and hope that the process you've watched today will help you. Our online wine making help site is available to answer any questions that you may have and is a free service that we offer.